Hi guys, Jill here, and I wanted to film a video showing my version of Color Bursts. And actually, truth be told, this is Lindsay the Frugal Crafters version of the Color Bursts. I just um, am showing you how I did it because this was her suggestion. So, um, I had shown you um, a while ago that I had gotten these Bister, um, and I should have had them out, but these are these pretty much um, little water colors and they're in powder form but I believe that they have a walnut stain base to them and when they hit water or water hits them they just burst and they give you really beautiful colors and I did some really cool backgrounds with them and um, I showed you those backgrounds and then I also showed you some of um, how they worked on my channel and they are super cool so then I was looking into it and I found out that there's also a product called brush out so that's been on my list to get and um, then at the expo I saw that rubbernecker had the brush show not brush show I'm sorry um, color bursts and so I was talking with him and I told him that I was the guy at rubbernecker that I was going to get brush show and he said oh well then you don't need these because it's the same type of product okay so I did a D stash and I had the money for the brush show and then I was watching Lindsay and she was saying, you know, any dry form, you could probably use like the color burst. And she said tie dye would work because it's a powder form. And I thought, you know what? I was talking with my husband. And I was saying, you know, I could probably just get away with these color bursts because I don't know that I need these expensive brush shows. And, um, you know, let's face it, I am not a true, true artist. I don't do canvases. At best, a 12 by 12 canvas is what I do. And I'm sorry if any of you feel upset by that. And if, you know, many of you out there are true artists, I just don't feel that I am. Um, so, you know. That's just the way I feel about myself. So I had decided I'm just going to get the color burst. Then Lindsay mentioned the tie dye. So I went to Walmart and I got a very small tie dye kit just to see how they worked. Because the main thing that I like about the brushes and the bister are the way that they do this right here. Um, and that's what I love. So I got the tie dye kit and there's three colors in there. And this red is orange tomato red. So really didn't like it, but I got these two blues in there that I like. So sorry for all the gabbing, but I just want you to know where that came from. And um, so I did this. I stamped these doilies. And these are from a Recollections Valentine set that I picked up on clearance. It's a clear set. I stamped and embossed it in clear onto watercolor paper. The watercolor paper is a 140 pound cold press Canson watercolor paper. And I picked this up at Michael's whenever it goes buy free pay for one um so that's what 66 or 67 percent off so that's when i pick it up 
and um, I just cut this to three and a half by six and a half and so then we're gonna do that point I um, took the little containers that the tie-dye comes in I put it into one of these little jars I get these at the Dollar Tree and um, I believe you get eight of them for a dollar I punctured the little top with my it's an older version of the Stampin' Up um, piercing tool and I just punctured the top I put two holes in it to imitate brush out because that's what they do they kind of sprinkle it out and the color burst kind of shoots it out okay so we're going to use those like a little sprinkler and um, so that's where we're at with this some pardon my loud chair so at this point we're just going to sprinkle some on see you need very little and if you hear like a tapping in the background that is of course good old Caesar my wonderful cat and as you can tell my allergies are really kicking in today I've got this weird voice and like that like they say here in Florida I'm sure it's not just Florida okay so sorry for my reach there we have it sprinkled on this is probably going to be heavier than the other one I sprinkled a little too much so now I just have water in the water bottle so I'm going to spray that on and I like to go light see let it do its thing and see where it's at I can always pick some of it up and over on the doilies I don't really so much go for that little burst as I do over here so see I like that little wiggly burst on the background part the doilies I want more contrast and again you can go for more water see I love that how cool is that see okay so now I'm going to come in with my heat tool and I get questions about my heat tool what I have is a Weller heat tool and I got this several years ago from Sue's Weinberg when I got it it was completely silent but over the years it's it's picked up some noise it's almost 20 years old so you have to excuse it for being loud and see at this point it's not completely done I'm just drying it for the first layer but the Weller tool it is actually something um, just like the Milwaukee heat tool you can pick these up at Home Depot um, because you know truly the heat tools are for paint for drying paint for those of you that don't know that that's their true purpose to see I love that where you can see some of the little crystals and believe me we're gonna blend this stuff together a little bit better I just don't like to use too much water and you can really see where the paper is dry because of the warping and like I said you can add more water and you can completely blend it out but I think the whole purpose of this is to have some of that crystallization in there. Okay. So you just feel it, see where it's at. And right now it's a little sticky because again we have granules especially on top of that embossing so now coming in with the wet baby wipe you can see I use that on this one because we have paint sitting on top of that embossing and we don't want that so that's going to do two things it's going to pull it off of there and it's going to spread it into those see so I'm going to go to another spot and see how it's spreading it in to that and it's providing that little bit of contrast that we needed and some spots you need more help now 
I don't I really like this one here I might leave a little bit more on the doily itself see yeah I really like that one so I'm more dabbing and I'm going to leave this doily a little blue. But again, it's completely up to you how you want it. And see, I'm just going to go in this corner. See how it's white? There, you can blend it out a little bit. because there is so much color in any of these places that you can pull out if you want. And while you're at it, I'm working on a craft sheet and look at all that color that's on the craft sheet. <laughs> Way more. So at this point I think it's kind of beyond, see? So I'll just come in with my rag and I'll spray that down. So there's our two very, very different backgrounds, but still very similar. I'm going to come in and still get a little bit more of that off of there, but it's totally fun. I'm going to probably get some more of those colors. And, um, as you can see, like, you know, leave it up to Lindsay. I'm sorry. Both of those aren't in frame. Um, but, Leave it up to Lindsay, always the frugal crafter. Um, so again, I credit her with this idea. And um, But I'll be getting some more tie day at Michael's and giving this um, with more colors a try. I'm going to pick up a few more of these little containers. And you can see all that you get. And with little sprinkles here or there, you'd be amazed how far that's going to go. So, I hope you guys give this idea a try, and um, if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Hopefully, your thumb is not as blue as mine are, but thanks for stopping by, and have a great day.